Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Oxygen Not Included in our Ultimate Base 3.0. In between the episodes, I took myself the liberty of continuing the excavation project here on the left side, as well as digging down somewhat. I also finished cleaning everything up we used in order to get the right amount of gases in here. We are still waiting for our first glossy dracolid egg. This guy already laid an egg, unfortunately it was a normal one. Our chance is currently at 25% and growing, so with the next egg cycle we already have a much much higher probability. All we need is one single glossy dracolid to get us started. Devon unfortunately isn't the sharpest tool in the shed and got themselves in a pickle again. I'm not really sure if I can help you. Maybe if you build a sandstone ladder there. Now, um, no, where are you? It's, it's your free time, isn't it? Yeah, Devon, it's your freaking off time. Why are you digging the only tile you're required to get back home? Oh, actually, there's another one. If I exchange this with an igneous rock ladder... But we might get away actually saving Devon. <sighs> okay, now they're taking a nap. <laughs> I mean, I can only do so much, Devon. It's kind of a shame that you have to watch them this closely. They sometimes act really weird. But there we go, Devon. You can go back home. Yeah, you made the mess, of course. Now blame it on me, will you? If Devon made a mess, they're gonna drop the suit here and the mess is gonna spill over. So I think right now it's time for a little lip here. And if we set this to priority 9, we might be lucky. Yeah, look at that. Devon just continues working right now. There we go. Made a mess. And this is why you might want to set up a lip. Right now, the mess wasn't that bad. I mean, they could have held it in. By the way, one tip I could give you doing big excavation projects is lower the priority of the digging and keep the priority of the ladders up. This way they will make sure the ladders are already in place before they dig away essential terrain they might need to get back. There's something so satisfying about watching these dupes, I just can't get enough. It's worth buying the game just for these moments I feel like and these are more or less idle moments. But yeah, there are phases of planning and then just phases of watching stuff happen. It's wonderful. I think we have to temporarily lower the temperature. I'm gonna go for the temperature up there. It's just low enough to actually support the meal ice. Later on this is not gonna be a problem anymore because obviously we want higher temperatures. And there comes in the chill. Let's actually see if it helps. We need to go below 30 degrees I think. And um, hold the phone. I totally forgot that this guy can now escape. Yeah, maybe that was not a good idea. Let's put that back. We should rather open up this one. Makes more sense. I'm also still using the metal refinery like crazy. At the moment there is a hydrogen accumulation here. Maybe we're gonna deal with that. Uh, make this corridor a bit larger. And then if we want we can make a little hydrogen pocket here. Looks like we're almost done on this side. I think I want to see a bunch more sweep commands. And as a matter of fact, I should sweep this up with priority 4. So in case I want to sweep something faster, I can do that. I also made a little barrier here so we don't get the heat of the power transformers. And now hopefully this exchange together with the water should be enough. But it doesn't go quick enough for what it is supposed to do right now. So I think I'm gonna speed this up a little bit with two temp shift plates. We just want to see some exchange here between the cooler and hotter areas. Also now opening up all of this we can clearly see the various gases. It is interesting how they accumulate and behave. And getting them to layer up like this is gonna make it easier to separate them into their individual storage locations. Okay, there comes the temp shift plate. We can observe how it behaves with the temperatures. As we first build it, it comes in at 45 degrees, but then it starts to shift the temperatures immediately. So right now it attempts to even out all of these tiles next to it. And if we check the temperature here, well, it did increase because things are built at 45 degrees. So that was kind of not what I intended. Just to prove a point, we're gonna build two more. Now this shift plate is gonna take the chill out of this water, transfer it to this plate, this plate, this plate, and then down here. So maybe that is gonna exemplify a bit better what I meant. What is our glossy dracolid chance? 33%! All right, that's what I'm talking about. Good boy. Oh my gosh, bird. Bird, are you stupid? Did you seriously not listen to freaking thing I said? And then they just stay idle, you know? And from the looks of it, they're not even sorry. Every now and then I'm also having a look at the fridge. For instance, now we have some stale gristle berries. Not too much, just four kilograms. Oh, actually we are out of gristle berry. What happened? Yeah, we only have like 9,000 kilocalories at the moment. This is not good. Oh, 
No. I took these extra farms apart again. That means we are lacking behind. That must probably be it. Also, I feel like we are getting a little bit too many reed fibers at the moment. I'm just gonna keep on producing them for a little while, but after that we can slow down, I think. And there it is, our first stone hatchling, by the way. We also got a Sweetle in here and Dracolid Egg. I guess we could go ahead and crack this up. You're gonna become an omelette. Oh, okay, there is my temp shift plate. Now we should see this slowly but surely evening out. Yeah, we can see how the temperature of the gas pump goes down consistently, already almost at 26 degrees. Temp shift plates are just one of those crazy things that are definitely required in this game to be more efficient. And so now within a short amount of time, we should see these mealwoods getting back down to temperature again. Already, yeah, they should already be good. One thing I neglected so far that could have helped me already early on is actually put in some more lights for efficiency. For instance, you can make them poop a little bit faster, I believe. You can make them cook faster with lights. Maybe you can even make them eat faster. And of course, they are gonna be faster at grooming everything and shearing probably as well. I'm not even sure which benefits we get, but I do see a couple of benefits such as in pooping a little bit faster, especially if they come from far away, then that could be a good thing to implement. We also have this duplicant motion sensor that theoretically allows us to detect duplicants. I guess we would end up with a distribution like this, for instance, and then we'll add some ceiling lights as well. And only the lights activate that actually need to be activated. So first of all, we don't use a lot of power. And second of all, we don't unnecessarily heat up the base. We can then easily connect this like so. So it's fast, quick, and it's going to help us speed things up a little bit. So thank you for that tip. We can also do something similar here and there, I guess. This way it's even symmetrical and nice. We want to detect duplicants. If someone is eating, then the light should turn on. It's literally easy as that. I think I want to do the same thing here for my crafting stations. I'm gonna cover those guys like so and then this one here like so. This here at the bottom obviously is just temporary, but I want to make sure we have a light for all the crafting stations. And of course, all of these needs to be connected with their respective automation cables. Uh, this is really not extremely convenient. I'm gonna wait with that. We don't really have a lot to do for our rancher right now. So I think I'm gonna be happy with the installment so far. You can see when Devon runs out, the light turns on and turns off again. This is just perfect. And we can have the same thing happening right here whilst pooping and washing their hands. So yeah, there's no real reason not to do things like this. Actually, this should be an airflow tile here. Also looks like we have a little bit of chlorine in here. Not sure how this got here. Ah, probably someone dropped bleedstone. Wow. So I should have listened to you and actually stored the bleedstone in here. This way I wouldn't have run the risk of them dropping it in the base. I think I messed up my point with the temp shift plates by not actually building one here. It just takes too long again. <laughs> now this guy's already hungry again. 94%. Ah, oh, let's just hope... The next baby is going to be glossy. We have Camille here, hopefully pooping faster. Does it say anything about that? Yeah, there we go. Lit workspace. There's actually a buff for it. Oh, I just love it. Glad we got that out of the way. And this way we also don't waste power or add unnecessary heat. It's only happening as the dupes use the space. Okay, then let's finally prove a point. It just needs to cool down from the building temperature. But after that, man, I want to see this working. I also installed the missing light here at the cooking station, of course, that was important. And this one here already gets its lighting from the printing part. You know, maybe I shouldn't have built the temp shift plate out of igneous rock. Can we just forget about this part? I'm gonna showcase temp shift plates later on. <laughs> also now, I think it's time we produce our first steel together. Let's freaking do it. We need 70 kilograms of refined iron, 20 of refined carbon and 10 kilograms of lime. So right now we can only really make 5 crafts. Producing steel is actually the most daunting task for this refinery. The polluted water has a temperature of 33 degrees and if it exits, it comes out at 89. So that is an additional 50 degrees added to the polluted water. However, that gives us a better idea what we can set this to. Polluted water evaporates at 120 or so degrees. If we set this to 70 plus 50, we should be all right. But I think I want to go a little bit more safely. Let's do about 60. 60 degrees is fine for it to go into the metal refinery and we can still craft steel. So it will have to cool down, but not quite as much and this way we can be slightly more efficient. Also, if we wanted to craft continuously, someone mentioned we could add a liquid reservoir and give the refinery priority. 
but I built this first refinery setup more as a passive system. I'm now just continuously crafting things in the background. And so it's not something that needs to meet a demand right now. And finally, my mealwork can grow again, body temperature below 30 degrees, and this guy's also not starving anymore. And glossy draglet chance already up to 40%, so maybe the next egg is gonna be it. Okay, it is now the next day of recording and I released the previous episode where you made me aware that we are using the wrong plants. I totally got that mix up in my head. The bomb lilies are just for the normal dracos and then for the glossy dracos you either have to go with mealwood or bristle blossoms probably. Of course I could just go ahead and check that, maybe I should do that in the future, but there we go. Mealwood or bristle blossoms. This means we can go ahead and uproot these plants, we do not need them anymore. I'm gonna exchange them with bristle blossoms because, well, actually dirt. We do have a lot of dirt, we could go with the meal ice. Yeah, considering we have 237 tons of dirt, I think I'm gonna do my first few hundred cycles with mealwood and then if we want to switch to polluted water and bristle blossoms, we can do that. However, with the bomb lily out of the window, we will have to keep this room at a certain temperature, at least below 30 degrees. So we want to keep that in mind. With the rest of today's episode, I would like to start hooking up this cool slush geyser, which is the only component left we are going to require to set up the steam vent here at the bottom. If you remember, we already laid out a couple of pipes. The first one here is going to be for the brine and the second one for the polluted water. I think eventually I would like this pipe to just continue all the way to the point where we actually need it. The geyser is right here, so I'm presuming somewhere around here we would want to start the piping going all the way over to the sky. Now in the beginning to avoid taking apart the cold biome here, I'm gonna take a little detour, but that is just gonna be a temporary thing until we have the space freed up here. We're gonna have to excavate a little corridor here at least. And that should already allow us to build everything. Also, this guy here at the moment is dormant, so it's the perfect opportunity to analyze and hook it up right away. I think I also want to display all the materials we currently have, so I know what to produce next. For instance, we could use a bit more iron. I'm gonna do 20 crafts of iron. As a matter of fact, we could also go with a little bit more gold. 10 crafts of you, please. By the way, I should have mentioned too, if we're using mealwood or bristle blossoms, we're not gonna use the chlorine. Of course, that was just for the bomb lilies. This biome up here is actually really precious to me. It's the only place we have a minus 65 degrees at the moment. This is just perfect to use for cooling all over the place. I mean, usually I just throw power at my cooling issues, but this thing is absolutely huge. And I mean, look at this biome. This is still gonna last 100 or 200 cycles without problems just running the refinery. And that is the substantially warmer one of the two cold biomes. If we check out the guys here, it also comes out at minus 10 degrees, 4 kilograms of it. We have the same situation going on for the salt slush geyser. No, it's even more, it's 5.3 kilograms at minus 10 degrees. Wonderful. We still have to calculate maybe average outputs, but I think we're just gonna use automation in order to get the perfect outputs and temperatures and then pump it out at the right time. There it is, revealed and still dormant. We have it at priority 9, that should be fine, but we can already think about how to set this up, maybe, as we are analyzing it. I'm also gonna go with insulated tiles, igneous rock. We're gonna have our sensor and pump. This can actually be done the same way as the other guys here. The thing is, there's no such thing as too low temperatures to run a pump. They are just overheat temperatures. That means all we really want is a hydro sensor. Place that right next to the guys here. And we're gonna have the space for a pump right here. Now, did I enclose this tightly or not? I made this three tiles high with a little bit of a breathing gap here on the top. This wouldn't have been necessary, but I think it looks good. Also, it allows for a little bit more storage. That means we will end up with something like this. Thinking about this, if we expel polluted water and have a gap here, there's always gonna be some polluted oxygen here as well. To prevent this from happening, we could have our sensor up here, then maybe we're gonna keep this lower. That means if we fill this up with polluted water first and have no gases in there, we should be able to prevent any from it from off-gassing. Now I wonder, do I want to modify this for the other thing as well? I'm kind of tempted to do that. You know, just lower this a little bit, put the sensor up here so we always have a certain amount of liquid in here. The guys are still gonna be able to easily erupt. Well, let's just get started with this one and I'm gonna modify the other one later. First I wanna pump out the gases and I also wanna have a liquid lock here. 
And we can actually keep this fairly simple if we just start filling it up like so. At the beginning, we might have some frozen stuff. Yeah, let's maybe increase the insulation priority. All of this needs to be sped up and then the rest we're gonna build as it goes. Okay, let's just see how it goes. We have some frozen carbon dioxide here. That's always interesting. It's extremely volatile. And there is Devin doing the analysis. Looks like, yeah, we cannot really breathe. So that might take a while. Devin catching breath. Okay, the oxygen is not too far away. I also want to make sure we pick up all the materials immediately. I don't want none of the polluted ice or even worse, normal ice to stay in this room. We can also install a gas pump, get those gases out of there once the liquid lock stands. And we will also need some power, which is going to be a little bit of a pain in the butt. But I think I'm just going to continue this line. We should have, yeah, look at that, plenty of copper so we can continue this more or less hassle free. It's going to have the same line as the future pipes. But for now, as mentioned, we want to keep the ice biome intact. Now, I think we could go ahead and build this even if we don't have enough copper. And all of this should be built out of copper or queued up as copper, but we will still have to craft some. If I want to build copper cables now, I cannot do it because I don't have the materials. That's maybe a little building tip so you can build something with a material you don't have enough of. But yeah, essentially that means I want at least 30 more copper crafts. Now we will have to bring a lot of polluted water over here. I think I'm just gonna make this a really high priority, but we might want to pump it in instead. Yeah, only to fill up the bottom floor and a little bit over it, we have to bring 7,000 kilograms of polluted water. Well, we better get started with that, I would say. And why isn't this being picked up yet? Maybe I don't have the storage for it. Unfortunately, at a certain level, even if the upper tile is still empty, the gas pump is considered submerged and is not functional anymore. So I had to put it up one more block and now we are trying to fill this with two bottle emptiers. As soon as we have touched this tile here, pumped out the gases, we should be able to seal it off. I had to make a little insulation barrier just to make sure that this little piece here doesn't freeze over and over again. Of course, right now, this isn't sealed. I'm just waiting for enough liquid so we can actually touch this layer. Hassan here is pretty funny. Fails on almost every level, but then is the best cook ever. Yeah, these crazy high stat dupes always come with lots of negative traits. Okay, now there's gonna be a moment where we have enough polluted water in here to overspill to the next tab. And this is when we need to deactivate the bottle emptiers. Otherwise, the gas pump is gonna be submerged again and we cannot pump out the rest of the gases. We got a glossy draclet egg. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy. This is great. That means we can totally get rid of the other guys. I mean, we are shearing them at the moment for the reed fiber, but I think it's easier to do that with plants. So that draclet is gonna have to die. Also, as of this point, we can now cook up the draclet eggs. For now, I'm just gonna keep this observed here, but essentially, we should now go ahead and make the gas exchanges. We could have done that right away, actually. You know what, I'm gonna do that at the beginning of the next episode, since we were thematically doing something else today, I think it's more fitting to do it this way. But yeah, we're almost done here, let's just wrap this up. Okay, there we go, it actually happened. We are gonna deconstruct this. One thing we could do is replace this with an airflow tile, so the air can go out and it can be occupied by polluted water again. Also this guy we want to deactivate and then we want to re-establish the liquid lock. You know, I guess in this case the gas pump wasn't really necessary. We could have done without. Okay, let's hope that works actually. Yeah, now we have polluted water here and the polluted oxygen there. Yeah, now we just have to complete the room and everything should be fine. That means I'm also already gonna set up my liquid pump that is gonna go there. It has the power and it also has the pipes. We're gonna tell this hydro sensor to only pump if we, let's say, have about 200 kilograms in the upper tile here. So that means above 200 kilograms and that's when we want to activate the pump. Now we can seal it off and we should... <coughs> I almost forgot the background. We want some wallpapers and I used igneous rock for that. Oh my gosh, this is actually lagging. Hopefully this mod is not gonna have a major impact on the performance once these are placed. But yeah, with that out of the way, we will also have wrapped up this room, which means we now have access to the polluted water and the brine, and we can finally do something about this contraption. We still have plenty of water at the moment, so before we implement any such thing, we need to ensure that we actually use the water more actively. But yeah, I would say with that out of the way, we're gonna wrap it up for today. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. Have a great time, and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.